Hi, good morning, CFC and friends. Good to be with you again this Wednesday morning. Um, as you know, in our regular church service on Sunday morning, we've been working through the book of Galatians. And uh, this week, as we come to the uh, end of chapter one and most of chapter two, there's a really interesting discussion about uh, the gospel as it pertains to Peter. Uh, it really, as it pertains to who do we listen to? Like, do we listen to somebody because they're Peter? Or do we listen to something because it's true? And Paul's making an argument there that the, the gospel is the divine uh, instrument that's given to us to believe in. And one of the issues that is underneath that discussion is um, how do we trust in men or how do we trust in ourselves? And we've also been reading in that service uh, the Beatitudes. And I thought for a few of these Wednesdays I might look at the Beatitudes just slowly. And the first one of the Beatitudes are blessed or the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. A lot of ways to think about what it means to be poor in spirit. You might think about the words of David in Psalm 51 when he's repenting of his sins, where he says, um, A broken and contrite spirit of God you will not despise. Uh, he says that you don't want sacrifices, which are actually commanded, um, and you don't want me to offer these burnt offerings, but you want a broken and contrite spirit. Maybe the hardest thing to learn as a Christian, uh, certainly is for me, is that, God, is that God is working humility into all of us. And the reason that's kind of counterintuitive is even as we grow in our understanding of the Bible, and even if we've been in the church and believing in Jesus Christ and believing in the gospel for years and years, even as we know more, we should grow in humility. We should grow in a poorness of spirit, admitting the more mature we get, admitting the older we get, that what we really know is Jesus Christ. That what we know and what we trust in is what he has done. All I can be sure about is that he died for me. That my faith in him delivers me from sin and from hell and into the kingdom of heaven, into the most beautiful, most unimaginably gorgeous place and person that I could even try to imagine. See, I grow, you know, in maturity, I actually grow in a way that actually has me trust myself less. It doesn't mean that I don't have integrity or I'm worried about having integrity, but I recognize that apart from Jesus Christ, fully apart from him, I am nothing, Jesus says in John, for instance. So we grow in this poor and so explicit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. I think this is particularly relevant as we head into the summer and into the fall uh, of, of an election cycle of the COVID-19 because what people are going to be saying to us and over, over and over is, I know, I'm sure, you can trust me, you can trust yourself, and I don't. I don't know. And it, it feels more and more like those around us don't know. And it feels like we're, we're demanding of our leaders that they must know. You know, when to open, when to close. No things we can't know. We've never been here before. And I think these words, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, serves us well because it teaches us that especially in a time of uncertainty and in a lack of clarity, that what is asked of us is humility. Here's what I can, here's the only thing I'm sure about today. I never expected to live in a world under this sort of quarantine. I never expect, never even crossed my mind that the world that we live in would be true. So here's all I know now. Jesus Christ died to save sinners and I'm a sinner. Jesus Christ offers his, his life and death to you as a sinner. And in coming to him, what he wants to produce in you is humility, a poorness of spirit that is really the mark of maturity. Look forward to being with you again and on Sunday. And thanks. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe and healthy.